In an age where female characters face all kinds of pressure from all directions, every period drama must strive to create a female lead that satisfies difficult demands, grabs attention while remaining likable. Well, Pearl Eclipse has its own female lead that is impossible to criticize on every front, or so they believed. Now, let us unworthy mortals dare to take a look at the masterful construction of her character. More and more nowadays, drama viewers want depth, complexity, and layers. And that means a romance fantasy drama must never neglect the main contributing factor to the likability of its female lead, her looks. Fang Hanshu is a girl who has to be raised and taught as a man to pursue a higher education, but despite this difficult circumstance, she never looks less than a well-groomed princess with her own makeup advisor and makes a point never to act like a man. Men who are trained in combat cannot afford to stumble in the presence of others in a place where tension is high. Well, Hanshu does. <sighs> Male officials don't sit like they're daydreaming about love's first kiss when they're attending the emperor's banquet. Haishu does. Male soldiers who want to be perceived as male don't flirt with their own mentor in the open. Haishu does. Not only this, she can switch to behaving like a full-fledged noble lady anytime she wants, despite having to live like one of the men for several years. So why is Haishu a man? Because everyone around her says so, that's why. Now, in fantasy stories nowadays, it is very important that the leading woman is smart and physically strong. But how do we do that when most of her time is devoted to figuring out the male lead's non-existent plan? Well, by having other characters tell the audience how awesome she is, of course. You see, Fang Haishu is very well positioned in this world of men. She takes a scholar test like everyone else, except that when everyone else has to apply their writing skills and knowledge, she simply needs to tell a story of her tragic childhood which grabs the emperor's attention and helps him uncover a corruption case no one has ever pointed out to him before. Then, make sure she leads battles of ambiguous nature and with vague numbers of troops, because otherwise, we'd actually have to elaborate on warfare and combat, and there's simply no time for that with all this staring going on. In addition, Haishu never misses the target with her arrow, and she can fly in and out of the Emperor's private quarters anytime she likes, and the Emperor himself fights all of her attempts to assault and invade his privacy amusing, which means she'll never get into the trouble ordinary people would should they barge into an Emperor's bedchamber uninvited. Now, to avoid the impression that only men with PTSD can be attracted to the female lead and to elevate her value even more, let's have someone who's completely normal fall head over heels with her for no particular reason. And what's better, let's have him disappear from the plot after providing her with some convenient solution, because, you see, it's not a good idea to let him stick around long enough for our ideal female lead to begin considering a life besides the one that involves supporting her ideal man. She can make pearls float in midair. Her special blood can cure whatever illness the plot requires her to cure. She survives cliff falls without any explanation. She is so perfect that babies only kick for her. That's right, not even for their fathers, for her only. Now, our perfect female lead manages to begin an ordinary life with the man she loves in the end like she's always wanted, but what to do when you suddenly realize that these two perfect people have nothing to do all day except staring at one another? Well, we kill off the most potential character in the story and send the second most potential character far away and drag our female lead back to duty. After all, she's too good for an ordinary life anyway.